Ihdina. Guide us. This is beautiful, beautiful language. The word hidayah in Arabic. Why did, why, did Allah, why did we say guide? Because Allah is the master. And you cannot have a master until He gives instructions. And how does that relationship begin with? Guidance. And then since you just said, I am your slave. I need your help. The first kind of help you and I need is you, Ya Allah, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Now if you are asking Allah to tell you what to do, that means you are ready to do it. Yes? So when we say, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ We are actually telling Allah, Ya Allah, I am ready to obey you. I'm, just tell me, I'll do it. I need your advice, and when you give me advice, I'll take it. I have friends who ask me for advice all the time, but they never follow it. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? What do you think I should do? What do you think I should do? I've been telling you for four years what you should do. You don't do it. I don't want to tell you anymore. There's no point. You, are, you and I are asking Allah for advice. Don't ask Him for advice and not do it. At least try to do it. That's the first thing. The second thing that's so beautiful about the word guidance. You know in Arabic you can say Ar-Rushd also is guidance. Arshidna, guide us. Ihdina is also guide us. What's the difference though? The word Huda in Arabic comes from Hadiyah. Hadiyah in Arabic is a gift. When the Arab would get lost in the desert, what's the biggest gift you can give him? Guidance. Water is not good enough. Food is not good enough. Because he, he that means he'll stay alive two more hours. He'll survive one more day. But in the desert, the biggest gift you need is what? Guidance. That's why they associated survival and guidance together. The ultimate gift would be having the right directions. Especially in desert life. We are asking Allah for the ultimate gift. Ihdina. Guide us. And we didn't even say guide me. We said guide us. So it's actually, a sw we're switching. We're going from individual to collective. Everything in the beginning was actually individual in some sense. Hamd is individual. Allah is a master of me individually. Allah's mercy comes to me individually. The judgment day is about an individual. Each individual will be judged. But immediately we switch over to Ihdi. Nah, because in this life, if you're going to have a healthy relationship with Allah as an individual, you have to come together as a community to ask. You have to be with other people. You need other people for guidance. You can't do it on your own. That's why it's not ihdini, it is ihdina. It has to be ihdina. And it's not even iya nahdi, which actually would have meant guide only us. <laughs> that would have been bad. Ya Allah, only guide me. Everybody else can go to hell. I don't care about that. Okay. <laughs> but actually guide all of us. We have to talk a little bit about, little bit about guidance before I give you your break. It's such a beautiful concept in Islam. You know, when you are lost, you need directions, right? And somebody maps it out for you, go three kilometers this way, two kilometers. See, I used kilometers, I didn't use miles. I'm proud of myself. But you know, do, take a left and take a right and you'll get there. That is information, isn't it? Sometimes guidance is just information. But Allah's guidance is more than information. Your counselor's guidance is information. The traffic officer's guidance is information. The GPS guidance is information. That's all information. But Allah's guidance is more than information. Allah's guidance, it actually has to do with personal choices at every given moment. And we're not just asking for information, we're asking for the strength to make the right decision. Two different things. It's not just information. Sometimes we have all the information, we still make the wrong decision. Because we didn't have the, the strength, the will, the commitment, the, the, the right mindset to make the right decision. Don't people do the wrong thing and you tell them, don't you know that's wrong? Yeah, 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 but I got angry. That's, that's why we ask Allah for guidance. By the way, if it was just information, if guidance was just information, how many times do you need information? One time. If you're given the information, you don't have to ask for it again. How many times do we ask Allah for guidance? Over and over and over and over again, as a standard. 
You know, I compare guidance to understand asking Allah for guidance, you have to compare it to drinking water. You can't say, I already drank it yesterday, I'm good. It doesn't work. If you want to survive, you have to get it again and again and again. And that is why every few hours, it is as though Allah is telling us, just like your body, every few hours it needs water. Your heart, every few hours it needs what? Guidance. You have to come back to Allah and say, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمَ again. Now a few hours your fuel is learning low and you have to ask Allah again. If it was just about information, it wouldn't be repeated this way. And we're also learning something else. It is not something you get to keep, just like water in your body. You, get, you don't get to keep it. Once you have it, it's not yours, you don't own it. You run out of it. Then you have to go get it again. And then you run out of it again. And you have to get it again. Nobody can say, I have it. I have it already, I don't need any more. You can't do it. That's why I like the comparison of guidance with what? Water. There's a thirst for guidance just like there's a thirst for water. Just like that. Right? So we have to keep asking Allah over and over again. 